Hey, thanks for joining us today. Here in our channel, you can catch all of our messages and live services. And our hope is that you would experience the presence of God in a very real and tangible way. That's right. And if you want to make sure that you never miss a message again, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button below this video. I have a lot to say today. I want to start right away with one of my favorite Bible verses. This is a verse that many of us maybe have memorized. This is a verse that you will prob you've probably heard many times before. Romans 8, 28 says this. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. We love this verse, right? I mean, I have been a Christian for quite a while, and I have quoted this verse, I can't even tell you, countless times before. But see, the thing is, if you've heard this, this verse quoted, it's really funny because when we quote it, we, we, for some reason, we only quote half of it. We, we love to say, for God is going to work out everything together for, for the good of those who love him. That's the, that's the part of the verse that you hear, right? That, that if we love him, God's going to work everything together for our good. But we miss that second portion, and that second portion is really, really important. See, a lot of times we skip over the and in a scripture. The problem with skipping over the and is that you're only getting half of the promise. And God wants you to have all of the promise here. It's not only to those who love him, it is for those who are called by his name for his his purpose. So don't skip over the and. I'm going to encourage you, don't skip over the, the and in this passage. It is those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. You need to know today, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you've been, I don't care uh, even what you believe. You, whoever you are, Male, female, young, old, whoever you are, you have been called according to God's purpose for your life. And I would even go to say that you have been called even if you don't believe. You have a mark on your life. Before you were born, God called you for a purpose, his purpose. He has an intention for your life. You have a purpose. Now, the, the definition of the word purpose is this. Purpose is the reason for which something was created. Now, I don't know if you know what your purpose is, but I want you to know that you have a purpose, that you were created for a reason. You live on this earth for a reason. You have, there is an intention about that God had for bringing you into this world. And we don't, you know, when, when, when we think about it, we, it it's almost like that it, it, it doesn't really register. Because a lot of times we're just walking through life. We're doing our stuff. We're waking up in the morning, feeding the kids, getting them to, to school and whatever that looks like, getting out the door to work, doing the, you know, chugging along, getting home, having dinner, and then doing it all again the next day. And for some of us, knowing that we have a purpose, that God intended our lives to mean something, that, that he actually formed us and created us, and before we even breathed our first breath, that he had an intention for our lives, that doesn't even make any sense to us. And I'm hoping that that will change over the next couple of weeks. But, you know, when I get a call on my phone, when I see, you know, that a call's coming in and, 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 and I see who it is or maybe the number that's calling in, you know what I think? I think one of the greatest inventions ever is caller ID. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I love caller ID. Remember any of you children that were born um, in the 70s or before? Remember when we didn't have caller ID? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, that, that, was, that was interesting. Um, but I love caller ID because I can tell if this person is calling. Now, if it's my husband or one of my children or, or one of my parents, when I see those names come up, I know that it's for an important reason, and I'm always going to answer those calls, right? 
But when I see unknown number, or I see like a number that, that is not in my directory, the first thing I think is like decline. <laughs> I think if it is important enough, they can call back again later. They can try to reach me or they'll leave a voicemail. And if they don't leave a voicemail, I know I can block them because they were just trying to get something out of me. Now, I love to have caller ID. I love it because I know that sometimes a call that I'm about to receive is going to interrupt my day. I know sometimes by, by what I can see on my caller ID that it's going to be an interruption or, or maybe it's going to take some of my heart capacity. Maybe this call that's coming in, you know, as a pastor, sometimes the call that's coming in, you just know is not going to be good news. And, and sometimes I see the call coming in and, and, and knowing that it's going to take some of my heart, some of my energy, and, and definitely some of my time. And, and, and often when I see a number or a call that I kind of feel like I don't have time for or maybe that I don't want to expound that kind of energy on, I often ignore it and let it ring or I decline it and let it go to voicemail. You know, thinking I'll get back to them later or if it's important enough, they can call me back. Well, I'm just curious. Have you ever had... God come in on your caller ID? And if so, what was your response? Was it a pick it up right away as if you would for your child? Or was it a decline? I'll let him go to voicemail. Or was it an ignore? Maybe if it's important enough, he'll call back later. When God calls us, what is our response? The Bible actually says that you have been called, that you have been called according to God's purpose, that he has called you. And when God calls you, I'm here to tell you that it will never be a waste of your time. When God calls you, it will never be in vain. It will never be without purpose. When God calls you, he always calls you according to his purpose. For his intention. There's an intention that he created you. And when he calls you, it is for that purpose. Now, I don't think any of us would mind getting the interruption of a call telling us that we have inherited the wealthy fortunes of a long lost family member, right? That's an interruption to our day that I think any of us would love to take at any moment of the day, right? And yet, when God interrupts our life with such good news, with such good news, when God interrupts our life to let us know that we have been called according to his purpose, not our purpose, not our intentions, but we, he has called us according to his purpose. I just want to promise you that, that when God calls you, when he has called you, that you are it is for a reason. It is for his purpose. And when you are living out the reason why he created you, when you are living out his intended purpose for your life, I'm here to tell you that there is no greater fulfillment. Some of you have accomplished some really incredible things. Some of you have great jobs. Some of you have worked hard and you have worked yourself up the corporate ladder. Some of you are incredible stay-at-home parents. Some of you have, have, have accomplished, you've, you've gotten awards. Maybe you're an athlete. Maybe you've done great things and whatever, uh, you know, that you have gone after. We have all accomplished things, but I just want you to know that there's no greater fulfillment. Everything that you have achieved in life, there's no greater fulfillment than to live out the calling of God's purpose for your life. Back in Romans 8.28, I, I want to point out a word here, and that is the word called. It says that God called us according to his purpose. 
He called us according to his purpose. Now, the word called here in the Greek, because we all know that the New Testament was not written in English. It was written in Greek. So it's really important to, to study some of the words that, that we just read in English. We need to know what the original intent was here. The word for called is kaleo, kaleo. And that essentially means God's invitation. When God calls us, he's not just calling out our name, Christina. No, when God calls us, he is inviting us into something. See, this word, kaleo, it's used over a hundred times in the New Testament. And almost every time that this word is used, it's used as, as in reference to an invitation, God's invitation. And this invitation is inviting us into God's mission. You know that God didn't just like flip a switch or, or wave a wand or sprinkle some fairy dust over the world just to have like a toy world that he can play with and, and have, you know, like Barbie dolls or something. That's not why God created the world. God created the world. He has, he has an intention, a purpose, a mission, and that's to draw all men unto him. That every man, woman, and child would be drawn to him. He has been working since the beginning of time to reunite humanity with himself because we have been separated because of sin. And when God calls us, he is inviting us into his mission of restoring humanity into relationship with their creator. And when God calls us, it's an invitation and God is calling you, every single one of you, all of you online, every person sitting here, God is calling you into your purpose. God is inviting you to engage with and respond to and to live out the reason for which you were born. I don't care if you are 13 or if you are 99. God has an intention, a purpose for your life. And his intention and purpose for your life is not over until you breathe your last breath. And so if you are still breathing, God has a purpose for you. God is calling you into something more. Now here's where a lot of people get confused. Is that people get confused because they believe that their calling is their career. Your calling is not necessarily your career. Your calling is not limited to your career. Your calling is much, much bigger. It's much broader than your career. It's much more significant than what you do to earn a living. Your career can be a part of your calling. Your career can aid in your calling. It can even fund your calling. Your, your career may be the avenue to which you find your calling, but your calling and your career are not synonymous. Because God wants to, he may use your career for your greater purpose, but I'm just here to tell you that, that the Bible is full of ordinary people doing ordinary things being called into something much bigger than what they did to earn a living. I mean, Abraham, he was a nomadic herdsman when God called him to become the father of a great nation that would one day bless all of the nations of the earth. Think about it. He was just like a nomad, wandering around with his herds, with his tents, with his family, wandering around. And God called him a herdsman to be the father of a great nation. Moses. Moses was out tending sheep for his father-in-law. When one day he sees a burning bush and God calls him and says, Moses, I've, ca I I've called you, I've created you for something more than this. More than just being a shepherd, I have actually called you to go back to Egypt and to deliver your people out of slavery. He was just a shepherd, but yet God had something more for him. His career was not his calling. Here's a good one for you. Rahab. Her career was a prostitute. Rahab was a prostitute in a pagan nation. 
She was a prostitute, and God called her to aid a couple of Hebrew spies who were coming in to, to, to get a scope on the land because the Jews were getting ready to invade this land. And God called Rahab the prostitute to help the nation of Israel so that they could conquer her land. Her story is pretty cool. She had faith in Israel's God, and so she helped Israel's people. And guess what happened? She was a prostitute in a pagan land. She helps Israel defeat Canaan. And when it was all said and done, guess what? Rahab actually married into the tribe of Judah. And if you know anything about Hebrew history, Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. God had much bigger intentions for Rahab than her career, amen? God can redeem anything. God can redeem anyone. David. He was just a young shepherd boy, an adolescent out tending sheep for his father. He was a nobody, unseen. He he was not important in his family. He was kind of like the runt of, of his big, strong, mighty brothers. He was overlooked. He's just a shepherd boy. But God called David to become the king of Israel. He called him to something greater. He was doing great things. He was killing bears and lions, and and he was, you know, like singing songs to God. He was enjoying his life and his career, but God called him to something much greater than what he was doing in that moment. David, too, as king, a man after God's heart, not perfect, definitely not perfect. He was a sinful man, just like any one of us. But God, because David was always after God's heart, God promised David an eternal kingdom. What does that mean? That the Messiah would one day come out of his line. Jesus was also a descendant of King David. God had so much more intention for David than his career as a shepherd and his career as a king. So much more. Peter. Let's go to the New Testament. Peter. Andrew, James, and John, they were all career fishermen. They were out in their boats catching fish for their fathers. When Jesus called them to stop working for their fathers and to become fishers of men. Those young boys, those teenage boys who were called out by Jesus on that day became the fathers of the church as we know it. Your career is not your calling. Your career may be a part of your calling. It may aid your calling. It may fund your calling. But your calling is so much bigger than your career. And so as we uh, begin this whole series, there's just a couple things that I want to teach you about your calling. There's four things about when God called you. Now, I want to be, I want to be really intentional. I was very intentional about the wording of this phrase, when God called you. Notice that I didn't say if God calls you. A lot of us live our lives with this mentality of if God calls me, I'll respond. If God calls me, I'll obey. And I just want to make the distinction that God has already called you. That you have already been called. It's not an if God calls you, it's a when. It already has happened. He has already called you. So when God called you, you need to know, number one, that it was a pre-planned calling. Your calling was pre-planned. You were called before you took your first breath. You were called before your father's sperm implanted into your mother's egg. And I'm sorry to be a little graphic here, but this is, this is Bible speaking here. Like, this is biblical. Before conception, God pre-planned your life. God pre-planned his purpose and his intention for his creation. Now, your parents may have told you that you were a mistake. Your parents may have told you that you were unplanned. But I'm here to tell you that they're wrong. You were not a mistake. You were not unplanned because the Bible says that God planned your purpose before you were formed in your mother's womb. You are not a mistake. Take a look at what God told young Jeremiah when God called Jeremiah to become a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1.5 says, I knew you when? 
before I formed you in your mother's womb. I knew you, Jeremiah, before you were conceived. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Now, I put prophet to the nations in brackets here because I want to make I want to make sure that when we read Old Testament that that we're not placing ourselves into this passage. Now, there's a lot of truths that we can pull out for ourselves, but just because we read this promise and we 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 can can pull some of the promise out for us. When you read this, it doesn't mean that God has necessarily called you to become a prophet to the nations. I mean, maybe he has. That would be awesome. But I put it in brackets because I want for you to actually put, you know, in your mind that God has set you apart for something, something bigger than, than, than just you. God has, call, has, has a calling, an intention, a purpose for your life. And I do believe that you have a calling that, that you can fit inside those brackets. I do believe that God has something greater for you, something much bigger and broader and more significant than your career. And maybe you haven't discovered that yet, and that's okay. This is what I'm hoping will get uncovered for you as you are diving into this material, reading every day, as you are discussing with your connect groups, maybe asking questions of your leader, and you're really diving into the material. I hope this is something that we can help to uncover for you over the next six weeks. But what we can pull out of this passage, I can't really tell you what your purpose in life is, what your calling is. What we can pull out from this passage today is this is that God knew us before we were born. God knew his purpose for us before we were conceived. God pre-planned our purpose before we took our first breath. And if I had the time, I could preach a whole sermon on this alone. The Bible is full of scripture that talks about how he knew us before we were born, how he formed us and made us to be exactly the way he wanted us to be. If you're writing, taking down notes, Psalm 139 is an excellent chapter to start with. This Psalm 139 is, is all about God forming us and having intention for us and purpose for us. In fact, that's a, a scripture that I like to read on my birthday every year. It is an incredible promise for our lives. And so, I, like I said, if I could, I'd preach on this all day long. God pre-planned you with a purpose. God pre-planned you. He has an intention for your life. But I just want to, to, to drive that in. And so do a study on your own. You can Google it. You can see that God planned your purpose before you were born. Number two, when God called you, you are purposed. You have a purpose. I know I'm really like repeating myself because I want you to hear me. You have been called with a purpose. Have you ever answered a call on your phone that had no purpose? And you're thinking, oh my gosh, why did I answer? Why did I pick up the phone? It could be your mom. It could be a neighbor. It could be your sister. It could be a friend. You know, like, and they're just like going on and on really about nothing. And there's really no purpose to the call. They didn't call to, you know, tell you something important. They, they're just like shooting the breeze and you're thinking about all the things that you have to get done. And it seems like there's no purpose at all for why they called you. But I just want you to hear this, is that when God calls you, it always has a purpose. God's calling always has a purpose. His invitation is never in vain. It's never a waste of your time. God's calling is purposed. 2 Timothy 1.9, I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified. I want you just to hear the language, everything I've been talking about, the language that's here in this passage. It says, for he delivered us and saved us and what? Called us with a holy what? Calling, a calling that leads to a consecrated life, a life set apart, a life of what? purpose, not because of our works or because of any personal merit. We could do nothing to earn this, but because of his own purpose 
and grace, his amazing, undeserved favor, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus. Look, here it is again. Before, before the world began, that this purpose has been written into God's book way before the earth was even formed. He has pre-planned his purpose for us even before we, not just before we were conceived, but before the world began. We were designed on purpose. Now, when I was 17 years old, I attended a youth conference with my youth group. And this youth conference, you may have heard me tell the story before, but this was really the moment in my life that, that kind of changed my course. It changed my trajectory. I was a good girl. I, I was raised in a Christian home, but I can't say until I was 17 that I had no purpose. I lived my parents' religion. I was a daughter of Christians is what I, the way I would say it. But what happened for me at this youth conference is the, the leader, the speaker, Ron Luce, who is a man who has impacted both my husband's and my life tremendously. Ron Luce, he, it was a Friday night, and he was describing what Jesus did for me on the cross. He was describing it in detail. He was describing, and as he's talking about what Jesus did for me for the first time in my life, I could see Jesus hanging there on the cross, bleeding, dying, bearing the weight of my sins on him. And I knew that, that for the first time in my life, even though I'd been through 16 Easter Sundays before, for the first time, I could see and feel and know that Jesus did that for me that he did it for me and I didn't deserve it, that even though I was a good person, I was full of depravity, that I was a sinner and I did not deserve what he did, but he did it for me anyway. And Ron, as he describes what Jesus did for us, he said, you know, Jesus gave his life for you. I want to ask you this, young people, will you give your life for him? And, he, and, you know, a lot of times when there's a message like this, the, the preacher, the speaker will say, you know, if you're ready to make that commitment, close your eyes. Not anyone looking around. I know this can be embarrassing, but that's not what Ron Luce did that day. Ron Luce said, if, if you're ready to give your life for the man who died for your sins, I want you to stand up in this arena full of thousands of teenagers and I want you to shout, I want the cross! And one by one, all across the arena, if you can even imagine it, teenagers, one by one, stood up shouting at the top of their lungs, I want the cross! And that moment when I stood up and I shouted out those words, for the first time in my life, I felt the grace and the love of Jesus fled over me. And I knew I could hear the words of Ron Luce in my head. He says, Jesus gave his life for you. Are you ready to give your life for him? And I knew in that moment, as I stood up and I shouted out those words, I knew that I was pretty much signing my name on a blank che check. That I was basically saying, God, I don't know what you have for me. When I give my life to you, I don't know what you're going to ask me to do. I don't know what you're going to ask me to walk into. I don't know what you're, how you're going to ask me to serve. I don't know what that's going to look like. All I know, Jesus, is that you deserve my everything. You deserve all that I have. I want the cross. I want to give everything that I have to you, no matter what you ask me to do, I will respond to your call according to your purpose for my life at 17. And I wish that I could tell you that I stayed on track. I wish that I could tell you that, that I just, you know, lived my life for the, you know, for the glory of God, but um, I didn't. You know, I had my little potty break in college, as many of us do. A two-year potty break from, from giving my life to Jesus, surrendering to him. And for two years, as you can imagine, I fell into a deep place of despair and depression. Those around me, 
those around that, that saw me, they knew that that was not the Christina that they had known before. I, I had really just fallen into a deep, dark place. Obviously, I'm not there anymore. Obviously, I have, <laughs> I've seen the light. And, and I can tell you on the other side of that, number three, is that when God called you, his calling is permanent. Let that sink in because I know some of us have gotten off track. I know some of us have wandered. Some of us have derailed. I'm so glad for this one that God's calling, it was written into his books way before I took my first breath. I'm so glad that my calling is permanent, that my sins and my mistakes can't mess that up. That my sins and my mistakes and my failures, they may delay God's calling over my life, but God's calling over my life is permanent. It's kind of like a a train track. God's calling is the train track. and I may derail. I may get off course. But when I'm ready to get back on course, those tracks are still there. Ready for me to move forward. Ready for me to move on. Here's a great promise for you. God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. This is Romans eleven twenty nine. God's gifts and his call, his calling, the calling that was before you were born, they cannot be withdrawn. There's nothing that you could do to remove that calling that's over your life. This is true for your, you today. No matter what you've done, no matter how far off track you've gotten, no matter how far much you have derailed, how big of a crash you've caused, your calling cannot be removed. The tracks are still there. You can get back on. Now, just to drive this down deeper, to give you a little context of Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, let me read for you the verse right before it. It says, many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news, yet they are still the people he loves because he chose their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And here is the verse that we just read. For God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. See, the people of Israel were God's chosen nation. There was a covenant that God made with their father, Abraham, where God promised Abraham that you will become the father of a great nation and this nation will bless all of the nations of the world. And here we have um, Paul speaking to the Romans and there's kind of a lament here because God's people who were chosen to be be a blessing to the world have now become enemies of the good news of Jesus Christ. They've become enemies of God's message and his calling for them. And Paul is telling the non-Jewish believers of his day that these same chosen people who have derailed still have the same calling over their lives. That calling cannot be withdrawn. Now let's just let this sink in and get real for a moment. This pandemic, 2020, going right into 2021 without even a blink, This pandemic has derailed a whole lot of people. People that were going strong for Jesus. People that were going hard and they were serving and they were loving God and they were worshiping. And this pandemic has brought on so many challenges. I never want to belittle the challenges and the difficulties that every single one of us are facing. This pandemic has been incredibly difficult. And sometimes the weight of those difficulties will tend to derail us. And many of us, I'm saying many of us, church people, Christians, Many of us have been derailed. Many of us have fallen into depression and anxiety and fear and alcoholism and addiction. And our marriages are in strife and our families are in strife. But I'm here to tell you that your calling cannot be withdrawn. And if you have fallen off track, you can get right back on. Your calling is permanent. Finally, to wrap all of this up, because I know that you're thinking to get back on track, that's going to take an awful lot. I've gone pretty far. I've really messed things up. I've really messed my marriage up. I've really just gone too far with the drinking. 
I don't know how to clean this up. This is good news, you guys. Fourth and final, when God called you, he empowered you. He filled you with power. Now, Pastor Joel and I, we have been praying for you ever since COVID hit. We have been praying for you. We've been praying for even this semester. We've been praying for your connect groups, for your group leaders. I just need you to know we're praying so much for your groups and for your connection with others because there's power. There is an empowerment that happens when you are connected to people, to humans. I've talked about this before. In fact, last week I talked about this. You have an instinctual need for connection with humanity. You have a need to be with other people. You may not know it, even if you're an introvert, you need people. And being with people will empower you. I read this last week, Hebrews 10, 25 says, let us not neglect our meeting together. As some people do, as some people have. In the pandemic, some people have neglected meeting together. And this is to their detriment because when we meet together, we are encouraged by one another. I love the word encourage. Encourage sounds like in courage. When you are encouraged by someone, they are putting in courage into you. When you are being encouraged, they are putting courage in to you. This is why we're, we're not trying to get you in groups so you can be a part of this, you know, big campaign that we're, you know, like getting all excited. No. We, we, like, my heart is burning for you. If you have neglected meeting together, you have neglected the encouragement that comes from being with other believers. You need that. You need that, especially now in this pandemic, more than ever. We need that kind of empowerment. Do not neglect it. Do not neglect it. Get in a group. We've also been praying that you would, you, that number one, that you'd be empowered in this way with groups, but we've also been praying that, that you would be empowered to answer his call. That when, when he calls you and you see his number pop up, that you don't decline it, that you don't let it go to voicemail, but that you would answer his call. We're praying that God would empower you to answer that call. And I believe when this pandemic hit, that, that, that he has been like ringing off the hook, calling you. Yes, in the middle of calamity. Yes, in the middle of chaos. He is calling you for a purpose because I'm just telling you the difficulty that you're facing. Imagine facing this without Jesus. And there is a world out there that is desperate to know the hope that you have. And God is calling you to more. God is calling you to be a light to this dark world, to the people who are longing for truth. 2 Thessalonians verse one, or chapter 1, verse 11 says this. This is Paul's prayer for the Thessalonian church. This is our prayer for you, Crossroads. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you. Another word for that is empower you to live a life worthy of of his call, not your call, not your intentions, not your purposes, that God would empower you and enable you to live a life worthy of his calling. May he give you the power. Now, when we say this word power, that is his power. May he give you his power to accomplish all of the good things that your faith is prompting you to do. And I believe in my spirit as we wrap up today, I believe in my spirit that God is prompting you to do something good. And I don't know what that is. I, I'm not a mind reader, and God has not given me any kind of download. But I believe, those of you online, those of you that are here with me, that God is prompting you. The Holy Spirit is prompting you in your faith to do something 